This is an in-service training program presented by Nutrition Care Systems. Today's topic is HACCP. Today's learning objectives are number one, state what HACCP means. Number two, identify the seven principles of a HACCP plan. And number three, identify appropriate temperatures to prevent bacterial growth and potentially hazardous foods. What is HACCP? It stands for Hazard Analysis Critical Control Points. And it's a food safety system that can identify and prevent food safety hazards such as physical, chemical, and biological. And if these hazards are not identified or controlled, they can put consumers at risk for foodborne illness. To ensure that HACCP plan is effective, the plan has to be written specifically for each facility's menu, take into account the facility's customers, equipment, production, and operation. And when you're developing a plan, seven principles are used as an outline. First, you want to conduct a hazard analysis, and that's to identify hazards in the facility, observe the complete path the food travels, and consider any potentially hazardous foods, and then consider potential hazards at receiving, storage, preparation, cooking, holding, serving, and reheating. Next, you want to determine critical control points, or CCPs. Identify the steps that if hazards are not prevented, eliminated, or reduced to a safe level, that the outcome would be dangerous, and those are called CCPs. Next, you want to establish critical limits. Once you have identified your CCPs, determine the temperature food needs to be heated to or kept at a certain temperature to control bacteria growth. It's also helpful to add those critical limits to your recipes or operating procedures. Critical limits must be measurable and must be based on scientific research. Next, you want to establish monitoring procedures. Use your critical control points to determine how each product will be monitored to make sure the standards are being met. This monitoring action should be recorded so it can be reviewed later if needed. Next, you want to identify corrective actions. When a critical limit is not being met, there needs to be a procedure in place to describe what corrective action should be taken. For example, if food is not at the right temperature, what's the correct action that you're going to take? Critical limit must be met or the food has to be disposed of, and then record any corrective action that is taken. Next, verify that the system actually works. The manager is responsible for determining if the plan is successful by evaluating it on a regular basis. And each plan should prevent, eliminate, or reduce the hazards as intended. Then you're going to establish procedures for record keeping and documentation. Keep the records of all the activities, whether it's test trays or temperature logs that are being performed, corrective action that was taken, equipment conditions, or any correspondence with suppliers. So let's talk a little bit about bacterial growth factors, or we often call it fat tom. Six factors affect bacterial growth. Each letter represents a key factor in the food safety. So F stands for food, potentially hazardous foods, and that's where bacteria grow well in moist, high protein foods such as meat, poultry, eggs, dairy products, fish, melons, sprouts, baked potatoes, etc. A is for acid. The pH scale ranges from 0, which is very acidic, to 14, which is alkaline, and 7 is neutral. So the ideal range for bacterial growth is in the range of 4.6 to 7.5. So that's almost neutral to slightly acidic. And then T is for time. Food should not be kept in the danger zone, 41 to 135, for more than 4 hours. So the second T is for temperature. Make sure you cook foods to the required minimum internal temperature, that being poultry, stuffed meats, casseroles, 165, ground meats, 155, pork, 155, eggs, 155, eggs for immediate service, 145, leftovers, 165, seafood and shellfish would be 155 for 15 seconds. 
always for oxygen. Some bacteria require oxygen while others do not. Be aware of situations where bacteria could be introduced into ideal environments such as a package that's torn. M is for moisture. Most foodborne microorganisms require moisture to grow. And the amount of moisture available in a food is known as the water activity or AW. It's measured on a scale from 0 to 1 with water having the water activity of 1. Foods with a water activity of 0.85 or higher are typically considered a potentially hazardous food. So in conclusion, all employees should be able to recognize hazards that could increase the risk for bacterial growth and identify those critical control points. Make sure you're very observant and proactive when handling food. It's very important in working in food service. And then keep food out of the temperature danger zone, which is 41 to 135 to reduce and eliminate any risk for food safety hazards. Let's take a short quiz on what we learned about HACCP. Question number one. HACCP stands for A. Hazardous and Critical Care Plan B. Hazard Assessment Critical Core Points C. Hazard Analysis Critical Control Points or D. Hazard Analysis Critical Care Plan And the answer to question number one, HACCP stands for, if you remember, it's Hazard Analysis Critical Control Points, C. Question number two, which of the following is not one of the seven steps in developing a HACCP plan? A, determine critical control points. B, identify corrective actions. C, call the state inspector. Or D, verify the system works. And the answer to question number two, which of the following is not one of the seven steps in developing a HACCP plan? And that would be C, call the estate inspector. But determining critical control points, identifying corrective action, and verifying the system works, those are definitely part of the HACCP plan. Question number three, poultry should be cooked to what temperature? A, 155, B, 125, C, 165, or D-175? And the answer to question number three, poultry should be cooked to what temperature? And that would be C-165. Question number four, milk is not a potentially hazardous food, true or false? the answer? As you remember, milk is a potentially hazardous food, so this question is false. Last question, number five. Hot food kept at 125 degrees Fahrenheit for six hours is safe for consumption. True or false? Question number five, of course, is false. Hot food that's kept at 125 is in the danger zone way too long for six hours, so it's not safe for consumption. Thank you for your participation in today's program. Our goal is for you to use this information in your daily work. We hope you are well served today and every day. If you would like more information about our in-service training programs or our consulting dietitian services, please contact us at Nutrition Care Systems, 1275 Davis Road, Suite 121, Elgin, Illinois, or visit us on the web at nutritioncaresystems.com.